I, I, I contribute, I should say, I, I attribute it to the fans. Uh, we've been very fortunate. I mean, I, I, there's a lot of cult bands over the years, but for us, it's been like a, a whole renewal with our music. And I think that a lot of the fans, whether it be young and old or par even parents have turned their kids onto our music. And, uh, you know, for many years, we've been receiving mail from all over the world. Uh, you know, Southeast Asia, Europe, obviously. Uh, you know, we, we've played in France twice. We need to do a, a bigger extensive tour, though, because we've only played, like, smaller cities. We've never played uh, Paris, you know. So, you know, it's like now we're actually getting to get caught up on all the touring that we should have done back in the early 80s. But the fans are still there for us, and that's what really keeps us going. Uh, I think also they have just spread the word, you know, sometimes word of mouth is more powerful than people realize, you know. At that time, I was more, you know, concerned with the uh, just learning the process of the business part of the music. It was the playing part's always been pretty natural and easy for me, you know, but the business part, especially when you start out in your, you know, late teens, early 20s. Uh, there's a lot to learn. There's, you know, there's uh, management, there's uh, booking tours, recording albums, recording albums correctly, I should say, because when you first start out, you have no clue what you're doing. You just go in with a producer or an engineer or both, and uh, they record you. But as you get older, you get better and you get more experienced at it. And I think that's why we're so proud now with the new album, because it shows a a different light of the band, uh, different textures and flavors, I should say. It's it's kind of like a painting, you know, like now uh, there's not just a base. You don't just put on the bottom base coat. You put on different layers, different textures, different colors. And that's the way the new record is. But it's still very heavy and extreme. But at the same time, I, I think we have more tools and more weapons than we've ever had before to kind of uh, assault the listener with different vibes of metal you know well i uh i i had met a, a girl back around that time and she uh now she's my wife actually um but she um kept telling me why aren't you playing music you keep getting fan mail i was still getting letters for many years even when i wasn't playing uh basically 13 years i was gone and that whole time i would get letters from you know all over the place. Europe, obviously we're from the U.S., but we, you know, we have a, a diehard fan base here. And more even recently, South America, we're really big in South America. Brazil, Argentina, you know, uh, Chile. I mean, the list goes on. The Paraguay, Colombia, Ecuador, really big that, through South America. So, um, you know, just it was... I think it might have been the right time for me and a little bit of encourage, encouragement from my girlfriend didn't hurt. And then I uh, started out in 2000, re rebooted the band, so to speak, and I've never looked back. I've kept going through all this time. That's actually really easy for me to explain. Um, really, I think a lot of people don't, you know, when they see bands, they don't realize there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. And really what that means is... Uh, Financially, especially for underground music, making enough money for the guys to be able to support their families and, and some of them have had houses and you've got to be able to pay those house payments, you know. Uh, and I think everybody knows starting out as a musician, even if you've been doing it for a long time, until you're making really good money, it's kind of hard to keep musicians happy. Um, for me, it's a little different because I'm so focused and Hyrax is my band, so it's kind of uh, my responsibility more than anybody else's. And, um, and also my, res my, uh, my loyalty to the fan base, you know, it's like, I don't want to stop the band. I, I would keep going no matter what. So that's, that's why there's been some lineup changes, but I'm pretty happy now with the guys I've been playing with for the last, you know, six, seven, eight years, you know, it's, it's been amazing what we've been able to accomplish, especially with releasing more records. Well, for one, writing strong material, writing good songs, having good ideas, good concepts, things that would actually, you know, we, we want our music to stay around for a long time. So we don't want to rush anything. 
I, I do have to admit we didn't want to take this long, but the other part that was going on is we've been touring a lot, especially like I brought up South America. We've been spending a lot of time there touring and it's really big. Like even just Brazil itself is a giant country. So, uh, you know, going through there, which it actually paid off for us because we are, you know, we have a big fan base there now, but, um, and being able to have time to write and record in between the touring took a little bit longer than we would have liked. Even this record, Immortal Legacy had to be backed up. We had certain release dates set up and then we had to back it up just because of finishing the songwriting and also mixing and mastering the record. And we brought in a legendary producer named Bill Matoyer, who who was the original in-house producer for Metal Blade Records. Okay, well, then we'll, we'll kind of save that one. But, but yeah, so the, the process of putting the record together um, and also because this is a very important record for us. This is a, a next the next chapter in the, the band's career. So uh, we just, like I said, didn't want to rush it. We didn't want to put out a record that was not up to par. Like nowadays, the records have to be really good because there's a lot of great metal bands. Um, and we just didn't want to put out a record for the hell of putting a record out. We wanted to put out a record that was going to make a difference. And we feel that Immortal Legacy is going to be that record. Yeah, oh, it's it's amazing because I worked with him in the first two albums. We did uh, Raging Violence with him, and we also did Hate, Fear, and Power with him. And uh, I've known him as long as I've been, you know, releasing albums. So to have it come back around, it just goes to show you, you never know. Uh, and that's why you should also be careful how people you work with, because you never know if you'll be working with them again, you know. But uh, Matoyer's been a, a blessing because with our music, he understands it. And he has been, you know, he's worked with everybody from Slayer to Wasp to Armored Saint to Sacred Reich. I mean, his list goes, I mean, I'm, I'm missing so many bands because he, over his career, he's worked with almost everybody, you know. Um, so we, we worked with him, like I said, back in 85. And, and he's kept up on our career ever since that time. Because I think with him, he feels like he's a part of our history because he started out with us. So we had done some shows in Los Angeles. We did one show with Agent Steel, and we did another show with Armored Saint. And he he had come out to both shows, and he he came back after the shows each night and said, "Hey, I I really like what you guys guys are doing, and if you're interested, I'd like to do the next album." And I was like, "Yeah, I mean, we we actually had three producers we were considering. He was one of them. The other one was uh, Andy Sneep, who I." I think most people are familiar with his work. And another guy by the name of Jeff Jeff Waters, who's an Annihilator. Yeah, he's a pretty good producer. A lot of people don't know that about Jeff Waters' work, but he produces and mixes and records all of his own stuff. So we were looking at them, but, you know, like I said, with my history with Bill Matoyer, it just seemed like the right natural choice. And I'm really glad we did choose him. I mean... I think we would have done well with almost any producer, but with him, I think we've done a lot better. So it's, you know, I feel very happy about the choice we made with him. Yeah, the, the sessions were pretty brutal because we recorded in Southern California during mostly the summertime. And anybody who knows about California, it's one of the hottest places on earth already, you know? So to be in a, be in a recording studio, recording probably the heaviest record we've ever done. I should say it is the heaviest record we've ever done. Uh, in those those daytime hours with the heat, and uh, it wouldn't cool down until later on at night. So basically, we'd be nothing but a ball of sweat the whole sessions, you know. But I think that kind of gave the record an, its own little edge. Because whenever you record under certain situations, it kind of affects the way the band lays down the, the material. And um, Matoyer was not easy on us because he, you know, he wanted to get the best out of the band. So he pretty much worked us like a horse, you know, he just made sure the parts were co correct and that the rhythm playing on the guitars were really tight, the drumming, the bass work, everything, you know? So, um, he was, he was kind of like having a mean stepfather, but, but with love, it was, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but he just made sure that we did everything correctly. So, and to be honest with you, we were happy about that because we didn't want somebody that just let us do it easy and not really focus on stuff. He made us focus. 
He made us go back over vocal parts. He made me work harder than I've ever worked on a record. So I, I actually feel good about all that. Um, but like I said, it was really hot in the studio. I think some bands would have probably cried about it, but we just went in there and did what we had to do. Um, and uh, it was an interesting session. One of the one of the things that people don't realize also is that we were in there at the same time as a band called Lizzie Borden. So there'd be there'd be times I would look over and I'd see the singer from Lizzie Borden looking from around the console, checking out what I was doing, you know. So that that's kind of a fun little note to, to you know people don't realize sometimes there's musicians in the same studio watching you record, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, we got all the tracks down, all the songs, and uh, he's just, a, he's kind of like having a, a, a fifth pair of ears with Matoya because he really has a good ear for the music. So he would hear things that we wouldn't even hear and say, no, you, you need to redo that. And yeah, it was, he's a, he's a good person to have as a producer because he gets the best out of, especially Hire Act, he got the best out of us. And the sessions were brutal, but. We 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 lived through them, and and now the record's mixed and mastered, and it's it's almost ready to come out next next month. It'll be out. Yeah, it it, it was important. I mean, we were looking at all the titles from the record. You know, once we were finished, and um, kind of even before that, I had decided on that decided on that title because I loved the strength of the the title, and it says a lot about what we're trying to do. You know, we're trying to make a really good record, something that's going to stand the test of time. That's really what the record's all about, to leave our mark. You know, we've done records in the past that have, you know, stood the test of time. The first two albums are considered thrash metal classics, which we're very proud of, but we're we're still trying to reach higher levels, and that's what this record's all about. So Immortal Legacy is just, you know, trying to say that we want this record to be a good record, a record that people will remember. Yeah, I think, you know, for us too though, it's it's a point where we have to also show the the um the growth of the music to show the talent, the the technical playing, but also, you know, we're going to remember our roots because we're very proud to be a thrash metal band. I mean, who would have thought thrash metal would live past 30 years? That's amazing, you know. Uh and to be one of the bands that started out in the beginning you know, when we started out in Los Angeles, there was only like a handful of bands. There was Metallica, Slayer, Dark Angel, Hyrax. And yeah, Exodus was, you know, they're part of the scene too. Because California is so big that you have the northern part and you have the southern part and everything in between. But, you know, between us, I mean, we were playing shows. It would be, you could walk into a nightclub and see Exodus, Hyrax, Megadeth, and Death Angel all on the same bill. You know, I, I remember the first time we played San Francisco, the band that opened up the show for us was a band called Legacy, who became, they ended up becoming Testament, you know. So we have such a very strong movement that, uh, especially for us now, it's even more important to continue to have strong albums. You don't want to be around over, you know, 30 years later and releasing stinkers. you got to release very strong albums. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, especially for the period, you know, that we grew up and that we come from, similarities to bands like Slayer or even, say, Judas Priest and, you know, Exodus and Iron Maiden and, you know, I mean, the list Metallica especially, too, because they, they were one of the bands that helped, the, you know, kind of create the sound. But we're all influenced by similar you know, music. I mean, I, I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you I love Deep Purple and I love Thin Lizzy. And one of my favorite bands, which might surprise you, is a band called Trust. They're one of the, yeah, they're one of my all-time favorite bands. I have every album they've ever made. I love them. So those influences trickle down into our music. So I think, you know, those same bands, like when if we get compared to Slayer, it's also like comparing us to Judas Priest or Trust or Iron Maiden, you know? You're going to hear those influences. But overall, I really do believe that if you listen to Hyrax, we have our own flavor, too. There's a like I don't think really anybody sounds exactly like us. We're a mixture of a lot of things. But at, at the end of the day, when you listen to our music, you'll still hear Hyrax. You know, the vocals, uh, even the arrangement of Hellion Rising and the breaks and the vocal lines there. I mean, if you know, you listen to Slayer, they do their thing and we do our thing. But I don't think it's I don't think it's a bad thing to be compared to, especially the good Slayer. 
If you're going to compare us to the Good Slayer, thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, our bass player is a, he's a fantastic bass player. And when we tour, especially when we play live, it's one of the, the, the highlights of our concerts. And he had been playing this bass solo, and there, this part is a, a small piece of the solo because live there's a lot of stuff that goes on. But I remember one night being behind the amps because when he has his solo, we all come off the stage and leave him stage center by himself and he does the bass solo. But I had been listening to it, I'm like, why don't we put that on the album? That's that's amazing, you know? And I think also it will inspire other kids that maybe play bass guitar or even guitar players to, uh, you know, come up with their own instrumental piece. And if it's good enough, you put it on the record. I'm proud that we did it. I think what's really good about doing something like that, most people aren't going to expect it. And uh, uh, Atlantis is, is a piece that he composed and, you know, I think it's kind of also his way of, you know, giving respect to musicians that he grew up with. You know, he he loves guys like Jaco Pastore, uh, you know, amazing bass players like that. And, uh, you know, so that that's kind of one of the things that was a little bit behind that, too. You know, as a musician and practicing all the time, some of the guys that he grew up on, he kind of wanted to give an, a, 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 what do you say, homage to, you know, send it. Yeah, it's like it's basically his little tribute, but also Steve Harrison. It's it's his thing, it's his style, and I think that that's what's really great about having that on there, especially on a thrash metal record, which most people won't see coming until it's playing. You know, not really. I mean, I, I not that I have anything against them. That's not it at all. It's uh, kind of one of those things when you're a little bit older, you feel kind of like. Uh... Uh, you know, I think what it is is uh, I've been around since the beginning of thrash metal, so it's like nothing, like I said, nothing against those bands, and I think for me it's more about maybe if they're around a little bit longer, like say they're around 10, 20 years, for me it might be well, I have to check them out then because I want to see how the playing has developed. You know, to me, I think what it is with the younger bands, they're doing stuff that we had already done, and like I said, that's not really a slap in the face. It's more, I'm actually proud of them for doing it because it's like, it proves that we were we were right about our music. You know, these kids are picking up and they're doing, you know, even some of their names are rem reminiscent of band song titles, you know? You know, there are bands that have names that are taken from Exodus records, you know? There are bands that have names that are taken from Megadeth records. So that says a lot about thrash metal. But uh, for me, it's more that I still feel like with music, it's so, especially heavy metal music and thrash metal music, it's so huge, especially the older bands that I didn't catch the first time around. There's, For me, I, I believe in the history, so I keep going back to the history of music and whether it's picking up on bands, like there's a band from uh, Boston called Wargasm. There's a band from Chicago called Snow White. Yeah, these are, these are obscure thrash metal bands. Another band called Demolition Hammer, uh, which, yeah, look them up. And and so for me, historically, I, I like to go back and check the, the obscure thrash metal bands from the 80s because there's a lot of bands that people don't remember the, or that people never heard of because, they you know, there were so many bands. So, you know, that's probably why I don't really listen to the new bands. And I and like I said, I'm kind of a historic a history guy. I love the history of music. So that's why I still go back and find old records by bands like H-Bomb and Shortledge and, you know, obviously Trust, and, and even bands from other countries like Loudness from Japan. And there's a band from Russia called Aria, who I like a lot. You should check out Aria. I think you'd like them a lot. Yeah, Rus Russian heavy metal, Aria. Um, there's another band called Master. There's quite a few great Russian bands as well. So I, for me, that's why the language barriers never bothered me. Like if a band sings in French or Spanish, like there's a band called Baron Rojo from from uh, Spain, and you know they're really good too, and all their stuffs in Spanish, you know. But and I don't even speak that well of Spanish. I speak a little bit, but I think that if the music's good and the the singing's done well, it shouldn't matter what language the music's in. This year, uh, after the record comes out, which is very soon, we're gearing up to start touring. We're gonna come back to Europe. Obviously, France will be very important to us. 
you know, the, the French heavy metal fans are still very passionate about the music. Uh, they've stayed around for a long time. They haven't gone away, which is great. Uh, we'll be coming through those areas, especially everything around it, Belgium, Holland, you know, obviously Germany. So it'll be a big U European tour. A lot of, I would say, well, we're, we're still waiting for everything to be completed. Right now they're working out. It should hopefully, keeping my fingers crossed, it looks like eight, we should be there in April. But I know either way we will be coming through Europe, especially because the SPV Records, or I should say Steam Hammer SPV Records, is based out of Germany. So I know they're going to want us to come over and tour. And it, it helps that the record's strong, so people are going to want to see the band. Like if, if we were unfortunate enough to put out a weak record, then there would be no demand. But I, 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 we already are getting really a great response from the record, and it's not even out yet. But the people that have gotten to hear it early are very much into the record. So touring is going to be very important. And we'll do the U.S. too. We'll, we'll also do U.S. We'll do South America. We'll do Europe again. We'll probably do Europe, if not twice this year, We'll do it once this year and then come right back again in 2015. So, And then the, the, the big appearance right now that they just announced, we'll be, we'll be doing the Bang Your Head Festival in Germany this year. So that, that should be very good. We haven't been back there in 11 years, so it'll be like a, a kind of like a homecoming for the band. Hello, this is Caton from Hyrax, and you are listening to United Rock Nations. And I want to say hello to all the French headbangers and let you know that Hyrax is coming. So prepare for the thrash metal attack. 